So, the hydrogen recovery is also very important because in most of the uh, your ammonia synthesis plants, you have a hydrogen which is coming out in the form of purge gas. So, this hydrogen uh, needs to be used, sometimes it is recycled to the plant itself, sometimes most of the time it is used because they are very important commodity or they are an important raw material for hydro processing reaction. If you recollect, we discussed this in the oil refinery, although this is not covered in this particular module, you have this hydro processing reactions, okay, where uh, you want to remove the heteroatom or you want to do a cracking, steam cracking. So, you require hydrogen for that. So, that is also a important precursor. So, the removal of this hydrogen from such a plant like as ammonia synthesis is necessary. So, uh, what is the way we can remove this hydrogen? So, there are many uh, approaches currently available, you have the cryogenic distillation, you have the absorption, you have the adsorption and the membrane, all of them can remove hydrogen. See the cryogenic is, uh, no, you have to go till let us say around close to 120 Kelvin near about temperature for hydrogen to recover hydrogen. So, what you do is that you pass the, if you put a temperature difference, boiling points, so hydrogen will be the top product and the bottom product will be all the remaining gases. For example, if I want to recollect, there is a, like we have a, here in our region, we have this Brahmaputra cracker plant. So, what it does is it separates C2 and C3. So, the, if when it sepa separates the C2 and C3, so because these two ethylene and propylene, these are very useful raw materials for polymers such as HDP, LDP or polypropylene. So, it has to be removed from the natural gas. So, once you do that, uh, you there are many steps. So, they use this cryogenic distillation, but the only problem is this C2, C3, if you want to separate the difference in the boiling point is very less. The difference of the boiling point less implies you have to use a very high tower. So, in this particular cracker plant, you have a tower height of close to 30 meters and the tower height and then the tire tower diameter because the amount of flow needs to be less the vapor velocity needs to be less. So, all this puts some constraint on this cryogenic distillation, but nevertheless this is still in use in the cracker plant where you separate C2 and C3 and then uh, absorption. Then absorption is also a, well it is a well known process, you must have read in, uh, in mass transfer. So, this absorption process the issue is with the purity of the hydrogen. So, you cannot get a pure hydrogen more than 85 percent. So, 85 percent is the maximum purity you can get from this absorption process. So, absorption is good enough when you want to, let us say you want to scrub out the carbon dioxide or you want to scrub out NOx, SOx, all this that is good, but uh, for uh, removal of this hydrogen from ammonia it is not uh, advisable. Then it remains with these two techniques, the adsorption and membrane separation. Now, the adsorption is good because what you do is in adsorption, you take a adsorbent material. So, suppose this is your adsorbent material. So, I just so adsorbent and membrane all similar, only thing is membrane will have pores in it. So, in adsorbent, it all depends upon how good the hydrogen, I mean how selectively it binds the other components as compared to hydrogen. So, for example, if I bound uh, only the other components and leave the hydrogen, then we uh, are getting pure hydrogen. So, that is mostly the way it is done. So, the adsorbent is chosen in such a manner that it will adsorb all other gases, all other impure gases except for hydrogen. So, hydrogen will be obtained as the top product. So, the bottom product you get the tail gas. The tail gas is something what you will call this. So, tail gas it would not be immediately tail gas. So, what you do they have a st certain steps which is called a PSA loop. So, either you can alter the pressure and temperature. If it is pressure, we call this pressure swing adsorption. If it is temperature, we call it temperature swing adsorption. Now, in most of the industries, it has been seen, it is economically to manipulate pressure as compared to temperature. Okay? So, that is why we will study the PSA. This adsorption is known as the pressure swing adsorption. So, it all depends on how the other impurities bind to the surfaces, so binding affinity of other impurities. Then you have membrane separation, in this case, so membrane separation is like uh, you have a membrane, uh, this you must be uh, knowing. So, again the same thing, what you do is you pass the feed, either co-current or counter current, you pass the feed. So, you will have one permeate feed 
and you will have one retented feed. So, this is the membrane material. Now, in this permeate means uh, on the hydrogen in this case. So, obviously, this permeate separation will depend upon the membrane pore size. The membrane pore size, it means that it has to do two function. One is it has to allow the hydrogen to pass through so that it comes through the permeate and it will bind the other component in the pores and then uh, take it out separately in another direction is known the retentate. So, it means again it depends upon the uh, how these components are binding within the pore surfaces and whether the hydrogen is able to pass through it. So, obviously there are some issues with these adsorption membrane separation process, we can we will see that. So, this is a take home message. So, why hydrogen recovery is necessary? Because from a 1500 tons per day capacity ammonia plant, nearly 22 mole percent of hydrogen is removed as purge. So, you do not want to throw it out, you want to use it for other reactions such as the hydro processing. Okay. So, that is why these four techniques are very useful and among, the, among these four techniques, we will actually our pull our attention to this adsorption and membrane separation. So, we will see first adsorption in adsorption, uh, we will see the pressure sink adsorption to be precise. So, just now I will just recollect what we have studied. So, we studied and we state that the adsorption and membrane position are the preferred technologies. Why? Because I said that cryogenic distillation requires very low temperature, the temperature is around close to minus, close to minus means negative in degree Celsius, but in Kelvin it is around 120 Kelvin, it is minus 150 degree Celsius, which is very difficult to up because the compression cost and cryogenic facility you will be requiring. And then the adsorption process, absorption process does not provide the required purity, it maximum purity you will get is 80 to 95 percent. So, now this adsorption can be done in two ways, temperature swing adsorption where what you do is you alter the temperature, in one of the temperature you adsorb, another temperature you dissolve. That way you decide which temperature you want to keep based upon your hydrogen remover. Then uh, what I will actually see is that pressure shrink absorption. So, you monitor the or manipulate the pressure. So, what it does is you pressurize at high temperature and depressurize at low temperature. So, when you depressurize you regenerate, you regenerate the adsorbent material. So, when you pressurize hydrogen is allowed to pass, when you regenerate all the tail gas is taken out from the adsorbent and it is again ready for the next cycles because you cannot go through once through process. Once through process will not give you much advantage, it will mainly maximum it will 20 to 30 percent removal. So, you need to you know you are, need to have a set of these adsorbers, one of the adsorbers is taken up used for regeneration then other adsorbers take the take their duty of adsorbing hydrogen, other give, becomes desorber and like that all the adsorbers are sometimes in some time either they are regenerated or it is pressurized or it is repressurized, something goes on within these adsorber line systems. So, we will see what it is. So, adsorption here in PSA is based on selective adsorption of gaseous species over solids. So, pressure swing adsorption depends upon as I told you it is a physical binding, no chemical reaction, no? it is not physical option, physical binding of gas molecules to the adsorbent. So, it will obviously depends upon the component which is to be adsorbed, the partial pressure. So, what is the pressure inside the adsorber and the temperature because temperature and pressure related to each other. So, pressure, temperature both along with the nature of the component. So, now you see at one end we have hydrogen which is weakly adsorbed and the other end all these components impurities methane, carbon dioxide, water, uh, ethylene, propylene, butane, ammonia are strongly adsorbed. So, these compounds obviously will be adsorbed while the remaining that is hydrogen will be dissolved. So, if you send uh, in some sort of adsorber for a single once through process, if you send a feed here, you should send it from the top to bottom. Let us say you have a co-current feed, so you will have uh, only hydrogen coming out here. So, if I want to put here the adsorbent here, so, such type of system we want to do such that when I reduce the pressure, these tail gas comes out from the bottom. So, tail gas means tail gas of the PSA plant is methane, carbon dioxide, water, C2. So, that it gets ready for, it gets ready for the second cycle for adsorption. So, we will see the, this hydrogen, what we will do is we will see two of this schematic, one is the hydrogen purification using PSA and the cycle sequence. So, for a PSA process, 
to be feasible, you at least need four adsorbers. Okay. So, four adsorbers have different functions and what are those functions? I will tell you. Let us see the schematic for hydrogen purification and cycle sequence together. So, overall in summary, again in summary, we, will just, we shall see the pressure sink adsorption processes were developed as a replacement for adsorption processes involving thermal regeneration. Okay. Adsorption is always carried out high pressure and 40 bar where regeneration is carried out at low pressure, it is 1 bar. Okay. Now, we move towards the schematic and before the schematic you should keep in mind, so there are 3 different steps happening, the adsorption where the tail gas is adsorbed, sorry not the tail gas, it is the impurities which is getting adsorbed, when it is dissolved it is called as tail gas. Then we have the depressurization, so you have an adsorbed adsorber, okay. you, the pressure is very high in the adsorber, so you cannot use it, so what you do is you reduce the pressure. So, if it pressure is reduced, uh, will you just let it just reduce the pressure means what? So, whatever hydrogen or there is a void spaces, the gases are there, when you reduce the pressure they will come out because they are physically adsorbed onto the adsorber, they will come out. So, once they come out obviously they are pushing some pressure, so that pressure you can use for pressurizing another adsorber, so that is what it is done. So, once you do, you do a regeneration in this depressurization, you have regeneration, pressure equalization, provide the purge, then dump and then again purging. So, the, and then finally repressurizing to back to adsorption pressure. So, this happens in sequence. So, first absorption happens, then depressurization happens and depressurization you have these 5 steps, I will explain these steps in detail. Then you go for the repressurization. So, this is the entire cycle which the PSA actually operates on sequentially and simultaneously. So, let us see the two flow sheets. So, now if you see uh, we have 4 adsorbers here, adsorber 1, adsorber 2, 3, 4. Okay. So, now in the first adsorber which I am assuming this is working, so it is at that 40 bar pressure. Just send feed, I mean if you just neglect these 3 adsorber, it becomes a single once through process. So, you send the feed from bottom to top, so you get pure hydrogen. Okay. So, this is the one which is marked inside these two lines at the adsorbent material. Now, fine it has reached 40 bars, so if you see for adsorber 1, for this one adsorber 1, now you see this is a straight line, so it is at operating at the highest pressure, this is step 1. So, it is operating at the highest pressure. So, this is the adsorption cycle. It means when the cycle is run till let us say this time, from this time to this time, let us say this is T1, from here to here, when it is operating, it is giving us purified hydrogen. Now, uh, you know, this it takes place fine, fair enough, but you cannot keep on doing with it, but after some time, there will be equilibrium adsorption. So, you need to stop there, so that is the time where you stop kinetically, equilibrium adsorption that is T1, till T1 adsorption. Now, in the next step, I will explain one this adsorber 1 only, then we will understand what happens to adsorber 2, 3 and 4 in step 2 and 3, 4. So, all these 4 steps, step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4, 4 steps will be related with adsorber 1, adsorber 2, adsorber 3, adsorber 4. So, we can say they are all sequentially and in sync with each other. So, let us go to the next step, this is the adsorption step, then is the regeneration step. So, in the regeneration step, the first step, if I want to focus on adsorber 1, the first step is see in this step the pressure is going down, okay. pressure is going down. So, when the pressure goes down, it means some of the adsorber the pressure will be gained. So, what it does is in the pressure equalization, when it is depressurized, the, the pressure which is releases is used by in pressurizing another adsorber. So, in this case, this particular if you see this slope is used in here this one. So, it will be useful for pressurizing the adsorber 3, this one, the adsorber 3. Okay. So, it is useful for pressurizing adsorber 3. So, the adsorber 3 your pressure increases. So, where is the adsorber 3? Adsorber 3 is somewhere where the entire regeneration is already completed. 
it means that the adsorbent material in adsorber 3, if you see the adsorber 3, it is at a lowest pressure 1 to 10 bar, all the tail gases which are there on the adsorbent material has been taken out. So, it is free of any impurities. So, you have only need to pressurize it. So, that pressurizing thing has been taken up by step 2. Okay. Now, then what happens? You have a step 2 pressurization, pressure pressurization is done. So, I will just write down one of the key point, what is the pressure, pressure reduction, I will write here, the pressure reduction of adsorber 1 is used to pressurize adsorber 3, okay, which has just finished its regeneration. Okay. So, this is the take home message. So, you are taking the pressure from adsorber 1 using it for adsorber 3. Now, next step for I am just I will explain for the adsorber 1 similar thing you can visualize for 2, 3 and 4. So, we go to adsorber 1 step 2. So, perch. Now, this part after it goes I mean this is the purge means this process is purging. So, in this purging process, what you do is, uh, instead of putting it, so you are increasing the pressure for adsorber 3, like I explained in the previous slide. Now, instead of giving it to the same adsorber, because, uh, you know, after this point, if you see there is an inflection point, the pressure decreases. So, that decrease in pressure is not much useful to pressurize the adsorber 3. So, what they do, if I want to make it a short form, if I want to put a nomenclature as PP, this PP what it will do, it will provide the desired, you know, it will provide the desired uh, pressure for the regeneration of adsorber 4, not 2, 3, uh, because well, what you do is uh, you are sending the, you know, the gas, you are sending the feed, you know, you are sending the feed at lower pressure. So, while you send the feed at lower pressure, the impurities which are present in the voids of the material, that is adsorbent material, they loosen up. So, they will loosen up, it means that you need to totally remove all those. So, pressure is not that high to pressurize other adsorber, but the pressure is sufficient to complete the regeneration of the adsorbent material. So, what you do, even if I am putting some pressure, this pressure value from here to here, if I is not much, so it is used in regenerating the entire adsorbent material of adsorber 4, okay. So, here the adsorption completes, okay. So, your adsorption is complete, so you do a purge. So, if I want to write it down in the purging, this is the final depressurizing step in a co-current direction, in a co-current direction you do a final depressurizing step in the co-current direction providing pure hydrogen pure hydrogen to regenerate, to regenerate another adsorber. So, which is the another adsorber, adsorber 4, okay. So, this is regeneration of another adsorber. Now, you have the, the next step, let us go, this is again fine, fair enough. Now, if you see in this dump process, what you mean is, we have seen this part, it is providing with respect to increasing. So, if I want to just uh, repeat all the steps, it is used for pressurizing adsorber 3 and this is the purge, so PP. This is used for regeneration of. Now, this part, so this part, I will write as D, D for dump. So, D part, 
if I want to write down what does this dump mean because the issue is uh, if we are sending uh, now till now what we are doing we are sending in the co-current direction okay. So, if we increase the pressure in the co-current direction then the impurities the last impurities will again it will flow along with hydrogen in the top most part. So, here we are providing no you are providing this co-current direction. So, this then the hydrogen plus impurities will also pass which we do not want, we want here pure hydrogen. So, what they do in this dump, this D state is that, so this is the final depressurization step where after which the regeneration starts. So, instead of operating on co-currently, you operate on counter currently. So, you can say that remaining pressure. remaining pressure remaining pressure is released so is released counter currently so counter currently it is released so bottom will be the tail gas and top will be the hydrogen. Maybe the this is not important the bottom is the tail gas uh, the bottom tail gas of the PSA plant. So, the reason for operating in counter currently is that the it is a breakthrough of impurities. So, basically this is a breakthrough point of impurities breakthrough. point of impurities ok. So, this is the D step now you are uh, your pressure is totally away and you are having at least this one bar pressure in. So, what you do after this dump that is step D. So, if I want to write down this is a step E equalization step this is adsorption is adsorption equalization providing purge then dump and then is of the regeneration final regeneration. So, as I told you this regeneration is been uh, given by different other adsorbers. So, then what you do is you do a purge. So, this purge uh, now uh, I have already told you this uh, this regeneration step. So, where will it get from in this previous one we had these steps 1, 2 and 3. So, this is the adsorption step this is the pressure equalization step, this is providing purge, then dump step and this is R the regeneration step. So, obviously, this regeneration will come from this pressure, this is will come from adsorber 2 PP, this same this PP is same as this PP. So, see the different adsorber are now switching their jobs. So, adsorber 2 is now doing a job of step 2 of adsorber 1. So, it is providing pressure and regenerating all the tail gas. So, ultimately it is regenerating the tail gas has been removed from D it is regenerating. So, PP this as I told you it is giving the pressure to adsorber 4 ok adsorber 4 and uh, for this you are getting regeneration from here is again this is PP. So, you have this and uh, where else we have this PP this is the providing purge. So, obviously, this will give to this direction so, this is PP. So, now you see all the adsorbers are used in providing pressures to their respective other adsorbers. So, now if I concentrate only on adsorber 1. So, you have the regeneration to be complete now the time has come for pressurizing. So, it is now free from any impurities the adsorber is ok now I need to do a pressurizing step. Now, in the pressurizing step again the same thing happens what you do is uh, this particular if you see uh, low no this one there are two slopes here actually this is actually one slope here this one is a single slope. This slope if I want to put here so, this is the next step maybe I can uh, go to the next slide I will explain this particular sl slope, but for this I will just write here that purging implies final regeneration implies final regeneration implies the final regeneration 
at the lowest pressure as the lowest pressure the residual loading so obviously the loading on the adsorbent loading in the adsorber is the least let us say I am discussing adsorber 1 is least ok. Now, let us go to the this particular step which we were just discussing. So, this is the repressurizing step in the repressurizing step. So, now what you do is again if you see the repressurizing step can also be obtained from the pressure equalizing step. So, we discussed now again if I want to write, write correctly this is your adsorption then this is pressure equalization then this is your purging ok then dump then the regeneration R. Now, this particular we will talk about this repressurizing R. Now, this repressurizing can be obtained from this step. So, this one pressure equalizing step of adsorber 3. So, you give up this 2 ok you are trying to repressurize with the uh, decrease in pressure of adsorber 3. So, only issue is uh, well it is fine you can do it, but we cannot give the remaining PP this one from adsorber 3 for pressurizing why you know why because this adsorption process needs to be completed at 40 bar. So, you know you have to reach this distance. So, the repressurizing is not possible in this. So, in the, the what happens is if you see here you send a part of this feed a part of the purified hydrogen which is obtained from adsorber 1 you split it and send it to step 4. So, if you send it to step 4 the pressure increases here. So, this is the regeneration step R. So, uh, it is if I want to write here R0 it will R1. So, R0 R1 are the regeneration step R0 is obtained from the adsorber 3 and R1 is obtained primarily from the split hydrogen which is coming out from the top product of one of the adsorber. In this case it is uh, let us say it is coming out from adsorber 1 ok. This is the way he actually so uh, right now there will be another R0 where it will be this again here it will be R1 same thing. So, this is the pressure equalization step and this is R0 ok. This is pressure equalization step and R0 and uh, then uh, E1 and R1 I like that you can put it here also you can obtain here. So, this is the way actually what you do is you at the complete cycle gets com the cycle gets completed. So, what they do is the final adsorption I will write down in summary the final adsorption cannot be reached cannot be reached with pressure equalization step with pressure equalization step or PE. So, what did they do? It is carried out with a split stream it is carried out with a split stream from the hydrogen product line from the hydrogen product line ok. So, this is what completes the PSA plant ok. So, this was all about the PSA plant and this is the way it is operated and there is a famous company you can go through it I have also given the reference at the references in the back. Linde, Linde is the company which actually operates this uh, processing adsorption in several industries. So, now we come to the membrane separation. In the membrane separation it is very simple in the membrane separation what you do is that uh, so you have a membrane module ok. So, in this membrane module is something like this uh, you know you have a uh, this if I want to draw it. So, you have the membrane module uh, something ok. So, these are uh, 
seconds more. These are called fiber bundles. So, I am giving an example of a fiber, hollow fiber membrane. So, these are called fiber bundle. What are hollow fiber? I will tell you. So, what they do is they will have a feed here coming. The feed is coming at a very high pressure. The feed is close to around a pressure of 140 bar. So, you will have a retentate coming out here. Sorry, retentate. R E T E. Retentate means whatever impurity is getting adsorbed onto the membrane surface and whatever is not adsorbed on the membrane surface, it is called as permeate. So, this is the permeate it comes. Okay. So, this is the hollow fiber membrane setup. So, in this these are the some open end, the open end. So, this is the seal. So, this is if you want to if you want to draw it right there. So, this is your I will say the fiber bundle and seal fiber Okay. So, this is the construction of a typical membrane module. So, if I want to draw it in a three dimensional the hollow fiber it is something like this. So, it is. So, you have this this is the hollow fiber. So, hollow fiber means uh, you have a layer which is coated onto it. Okay. This is called the porous support which acts as the porous support which acts as the membrane. So, this is some sort of like this. What you do is you send the feed here inside okay. and what you get outside is your retented. And uh, you know it is a hollow fiber. So, you get if it is passing through this porous support, it comes out through the annular portion. Okay. If it comes out through the annular portion, this is called as permeate, permeate. So, this is the permeate, it is coming out. So, it means that when it is comes through a very high pressure, this hydrogen will pass through this porous layer coming out from this hydrogen and the remaining all gases will pass as the permeate. So, this design of this porous support, it is a membrane which is thin layer. This is a growing research area where most of the chemical engineer or chemists are working. So, this particular fabrication of this membrane module was conceptualized by Monsanto. This is the company which are been manufacturing this membrane hollow fiber membrane module and selling it. So, the membrane obviously, does the separation will depend upon the molecular size and the strength of adsorption or solubility in the membrane material. So, membrane properties are better for the separation of gases. Why? Because it has high selectivity, high permeability, high mechanical and high thermal stability and chemical resistance. So, you can have membrane in two manners, either it can be tubular that is shell and type, shell and tube type heat exchanger or it can be flat which is plate and frame type module. Okay. So, this is one uh, we have seen this type of shell and tube, the tubular type of geometry. So, this is what uh, I mean, uh, so flat may be uh, plate and frame filter just now we saw the shell type. So, the flow can be co-current, counter current or cross current whichever way. So, only thing is this the manner in which they are separated these buffer module modules are manufactured by Monsanto. So, what are the advantages of the membrane? It has low energy consumption, the low pressure drop, no additional phase required and it is continuous separation. But there are some disadvantages, it may be fouled because some of the membranes are made using the material called polysulfone membrane, polysulfone material. It also has a short lifetime, it has a low selectivity and also not much economical. So, if I want to draw the flow sheet for the membrane separation, it is something like this which is happening. So, you have here. So, this is your let us say the ammonia uh, the purge gas.
the purge gas which has around close to 61 mole percent, 61 mole percent hydrogen and it is 140 bar pressure. Okay. So, uh, here you have water coming in, how it is integrated within the system that is what we want to write. So, uh, it is uh, you know this is a packing tray type packing, tray type column. So, counter current way you are removing the other impurities mainly the not impurities the required solution. This is the ammonia solution NH3 solution you are taking out from this purge gas you want to take out all the purge gas that is ammonia may primarily. Then what you do remaining gases are primarily hydrogen. So, you set it in two different two stage membrane module. So, in the first module it goes and then in the second module it goes further. So, you have the permeate let us say the permeate in the first membrane module this is the second membrane module. So, I can write down as M1 and M2 module, membrane module 1 and membrane module 2. So, in this permeate what they do is they will get a stream of permeate which is having at the pressure of around 70 bar which will be close to 87 mole percent hydrogen. hydrogen and while you go ahead second module the pressure will be lower. So, here you will get 25 bar and 85 mole percent mole percent hydrogen H2. So, this is again permeate. Okay. So, this permeate will be again combined with the recycled gas I have written after compression H2 permeates through the membrane and combined with the main recycled stream to the ammonia synthesis reactor. And what is the retentate? The retentate stream is then sent to the reformer. So, the retentate here is nothing but retentate will be 21 So, this membrane this is the membrane. So, it is 21 mole percent this, this is strength for the reforming and these two are sent for the recycle. So, this is way the membrane module sections within the ammonia plant work. So, they will recover the hydrogen. So, we have a high pressure 140 bar finally, you have two different permeate stream one at 70 bar one at 25 bars taking out the hydrogen. Okay. So, this actually uh, uh, we it completes our integrated ammonia plant and hydrogen recovery. So, in the next class we will actually study this urea and uh, uh, section where we will be using ammonia as the raw material to prepare urea. So, I will like to say that you should go through this references this is our main textbook and uh, you also should uh, uh, go through this introduction to ammonia production. And then the Linda process this particular uh, link you should go it discusses the PSA flow sheet in detail. Okay. So, it will discuss the PSA flow sheet you can go through this whatever I have uh, just discussed to get more information. Thank you. Mm -hmm.